On this episode of Eat Sleep Drive, we're tuning my GT350 with ethanol. Stay tuned to see how much power it makes. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Eat Sleep Drive. Rainy day here in Ohio, but it will not spoil my day because today we're putting my GT350 on the dyno. Yes, we're getting it dyno tuned at Turning Concepts in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I'm not gonna let this rain ruin my day because anytime you put a car on a dyno, it's just a better day. So what we're gonna be doing today, I'm gonna be leaving here in just a few short minutes. We're gonna to head to Turning Concepts, which is my favorite performance shop in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're gonna have Corbin of Johnson Tuning tune my GT350, custom tune on the dyno. He's gonna tweak everything. And uh, I'm gonna, I wanna get him to talk about this engine, his familiarity with it and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll see what kind of gains we can make. Um, it's an NA engine, like, Obviously, turbo engines make way more power when you tune them. I'm not sure what peak kind of power we're gonna make, but what I would like to see is some improvement on the low end, uh, hopefully get some more torque on the low end because this engine revs to 8,200 RPM, uh, but it's a little bit lazy on the low end. So we'll see what kind of power we can make on the dyno with Corbin tuning it. I'm super pumped. And if nothing else, we're gonna make some beautiful, beautiful noises with this car on the dyno. So why don't you guys come along for the ride? While I never really felt my GT350 needed more power, it's hard for me to pass up the drivability improvements a good tune does for a car. OEMs tune cars largely for emissions in mind, and I was curious what my GT350 would do with proper software. I've been going to turn in concepts and Johnson tuning for years for my various builds. They are some of very few people I trust with my car. All right, guys, well, we're obviously at Turning Concepts now. This is Corbin from Johnson Tubing. Johnson Tuning. Johnson Thank Tuning. You. Johnson right. Tuning, get that right. Not, not tubing. Not tubing, they don't do yeah. tubing. Uh, so <laughs> huge thanks to Corbin to uh, for entertaining me today. It's not often that tuners uh, like cameras in their faces, so thank you very much for, uh, for having us. No but uh, So Corbin obviously has a tuning company, and uh, I understand you have a pretty interesting experience with this engine specifically, so if you could tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I do all the tuning for Fat House Fabrications, which uh, anybody that's probably watching this video knows anything about GT350s has probably seen uh, everything that we've been doing there for the past couple of years with this platform, uh, really trying to push the envelope and do things that uh, people aren't doing with these cars. Um, you know, there's some purists out there that don't really like anything to do with power adders and like the car's NA, that's completely fine. Uh, we're just trying to do the most that can be done with this platform uh, and, and try to do it the best way possible. So Fat House uh, is obviously known for doing turbo kits. We also uh, you know, offer a proprietary MoTeC package uh, for these cars that you know, offers us unparalleled control, uh, especially for these cars that are making you know, 1,300 plus wheel horsepower. Um, but, uh, Which you have tuned. You have tuned, tuned 1,300 horse, horsepower right, yeah, GT350. So. Yes, you heard that right, 1,300 horsepower. Not bad. Well, we're not going to be making a thousand horsepower today, no, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. You know, but <laughs> so we'll get it done. <laughs> so this is uh, obviously just going to be an NA tune. Car's completely stock, like not even an intake or anything like that. Yeah. But Corbin, uh, so I came here just thinking it was going to be a '93 tune, but Corbin has since let me know that these cars have a sort of flex fuel capability to run ethanol stock. So if you could talk briefly about that kind of the capability mm -hmm. it has. Yeah, so uh, thankfully Ford um, uses this uh, Tricor ECU. Uh, it's the same ECU that comes in uh, like an F-150, which is a factory flex fuel vehicle. So the way Ford does it um, is uh, not exactly like GM. GM actually, in any of their flex fuel vehicles, it uses a flex fuel sensor. So the flex fuel sensor is measuring the ethanol content directly. Um, Ford, on the other hand, uh, chose not to use a sensor. Um, I'm not sure if it was just from saving money probably, but 
Uh, the way that Ford does it is they use what's called an inferred ethanol logic. So um, what that means is um, they're basically calculating what the estimated ethanol content is. And the way that they're doing that is they're looking at um, the O2 sensors. So the O2 sensors are constantly um, trimming fuel plus and minus on these cars, even at full throttle. So they're factory wide bands um, and they're able to uh, adjust the feeling so that it's always on target no matter the conditions. So um, the way it actually works though is uh, the ECU knows when the fuel level has changed and then it also knows the amount of time that it takes to consume the fuel that's in the lines, being that it's a returnless fuel system. So once that time has elapsed, the ECU will start looking at the O2 sensors and seeing if the fuel trends are starting to go positive, meaning adding fuel, it can basically assume that the ethanol content has uh, increased and therefore required more fuel volume. So uh, at that point, it'll start updating the ethanol content until it's reached uh, an equilibrium state where the fuel trends are back down to zero. And uh, it's actually a, a pretty uh, accurate system. Uh, being that these cars are naturally aspirated, uh, and uh, you know it's the same system that the F-150s use, uh, we, we try to use that same factory logic uh, on these cars as well as the GTs, um, and it's, uh, it's been flawless, so. That's sweet. Well, that's, like I said, news to me. So, <laughs> yeah. so I guess now um, we already did a baseline made about 440, yep. just under 440. Yep. We're gonna do a 93 tune, correct? Yep. And then uh, we'll hit it, fill it up with some ethanol yep. and uh, hit it again and yep. see what we get, right? Yep, sweet. Sure. So. so let's uh, let's dive in uh, with the, no further ado, the dyno run. All right. basically you know it's below 300 foot pounds stock from you know 2500 to 3300 rpm minute so we so really kind of cut out part of that torque dip over there right log looks clean though no knock or anything that's good as far as peak power goes like i'm pretty happy with that we might be able to get a little bit more out of it okay Usually we see about 20 wheel horsepower, so that's, that's about right. Yeah, which is pretty, I mean, you know, when obviously if it was a turbo engine, mm -hmm. you can make so much more with just a tune, but just the NA car to make right. 20 wheel no, yeah. with just a tune is pretty nice. Okay. Cool, so with uh, Corbin's custom map, we made 20 horsepower, which I'm super happy with uh, on just the NA 93 octane tune. Um, we did a couple pulls, pretty consistent, but now, I mean, it's time to do some fun. Uh, and apply the ethanol map. So we're gonna turn the boost up. <laughs> we're turning the boost up. The NA boost that is. Yeah. So uh, so he's gonna do his tinkering, and then we'll do another run. Hey, can I get some of that juice? Oh yeah, you can get that juice. Get that juice. What kind of juice do you need? We got apple, uh, grand, cran grape, corn, uh, chicken, and we got some of that good good. That's up in the truck though. <laughs> So we put the magic juice in. Was it the red or the the blue? I forget which which juice they put in, but uh, was it the red? red okay, good. <laughs> no, so we put in, uh, so it was probably some roughly E70 because we're on winter blend um, ethanol and we had a couple gallons in there. So according to Corbin, based on what we're kind of reading, it's somewhere around E50 is like what we're ultimately at. So not ideal, but we're still running like a decent amount of ethanol, um, so we'll get be able to get lo a lot of those uh, benefits of, of running ethanol. So we're gonna make a poll and and, and see how it does on E50. I'm uh, I'm cautiously optimistic, but we'll see how much more power we can make over uh, 440. Five, huh? Yeah, Woo. And it should be noted that 
we are on a Dino Dynamics Dyno. Yeah. Um, you would you would reckon a Dyno Jet that's e over 500, correct? Yeah, I would say so. I'd say you're uh, at least at the 500 range. Um, cool. Yeah. yeah. Based on the the baseline, so normally we see, you know, these cars stock with baseline anywhere from 460 to 470 Dyno Jet. Um, we're at 439 is what a baseline here, so. On pump gas, we picked up right at 19 horsepower, and uh, now on E50, um, we're at 485 horsepower. So it's really good gains, yeah. especially for a bone stock car. Yeah, 45 horsepower, no, <clears throat> on a NA car with uh, no physical mods. Mm -hmm. Solid. Doesn't go into that cat over temp mode anymore. Uh, we're live here if you want to say something. What do you think about? The power that it's making it's right now freak. is the it power? a factory freak? Yeah. It what model is this? Mod. It's a uh, it's a model. <laughs> it's a Ford. Yeah. It's a Ford. Ford yeah, Ford. Ford Mustang. This is it a Mustang? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you know the production? Uh, like what number this is? Oh, uh, 643. Yeah. 643. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Which one is it? G zero six forty three. Wait, is it G? Yeah. Are you sure? Double check. That's what it Zoom says. Zoom all the way <laughs> in on it so you can't even read it. G06643. Oh, man. Oh, my God, dude. This is a G? <laughs> no wonder it makes so much power. Do you know what that means? <laughs> what does it mean? If this is a G Series GT350, 100%. I, I'll, hold on, I'll call. <laughs> hey. So we got a G Series Mustang here, dude. I know. You call the guy. Yeah. Three, <laughs> three, these numbers. It's Tim. Tim. Tim Allen. Tim Ryan Allen. <laughs> oh. What does he think about it though? Factory freak. He co confirmed. He confirmed factory <laughs> freak. Yeah. He said all the G series factory Dude. freaks. You're good. Wow. Yeah. Four hundred eighty-five horsepower. <laughs> Yeah, and it was making 439. Fa yeah, factory freak. Yep. All right, cool. See you, man. I'll see you tonight on set. So Corbin cleaned up a few things. We're going to do our second run on E85. Not really E85, E50. Let's see what happens. It's at 488. All right. uh, yeah, we were mainly working on the torque dip, uh, the low end that these cars have, uh, naturally aspirated. Um, so the stock line, or the stock uh, baseline, uh, you know, 2,500 RPM on this dyno is only making 20, 250 pounds of torque. Um, so now on ethanol and actually tuning it, uh, we picked up about 50 foot pounds of torque at that exact RPM, uh, which is huge. Um, Obviously, the gains up top are pretty consistent, but uh, the real gains are low end, so yeah. we're really cleaning up this torque dip. So, so a pretty serious area under the curve there. Uh, that, I mean, I should feel that. I mean, I'm in 2,500 RPM a lot driving, so right. I should definitely feel 50 uh, pound-feet of torque. Mm -hmm. yep. Sweet. So that's that's a wrap. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, almost exactly 40 awesome. Well, thanks so much, Corbin. Again, really appreciate it. Um, I'm. Looking forward to go uh, actually driving this to see what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> now, unfortunately, the day I got the car tuned, it was so rainy. I couldn't even give my impressions of this car at the time because it just, it just wouldn't hook up uh, because it was so wet outside. But the one thing I will say is that the thing I noticed immediately and that I'm most happy about over anything on this tune is the drivability at lower RPM. I had a big problem with the way this car behaved, just low RPM, part throttle. It, it felt so lazy, and that's partly because it's like a high revving V8, but it would make you question, am I really driving a V8? Like, why is no one home? And the tune seems to have completely fixed that, basically. Uh, so I'm very happy to report that. So that's definitely the area under the curve that we always talk about down low RPMs, not necessarily peak power RPM. And my camera is attacking me. So truthfully, if nothing else, 
I'm honestly happiest about the just general drivability improvements of this tune. But we also got some power improvements. And this car didn't really need to be any faster, if I'm honest. But, you know, it never hurts. So another 40, 50 horsepower. Yeah, dude, this thing is fast. Like, it was already fast before, but it's just a whole new level. E85 is awesome. I, I will be honest, like, when E85 kind of first hit the market, ethanol kind of first hit the market, and people were finally using it for, like, performance stuff, I was really apprehensive, and still to this day, I would never just get an E85 tune, because there's just not enough gas stations around me, at least, to justify uh, being able to, like, put E85 in it all the time. But the fact that they could do a flex tune with this car totally is a game changer. I'm never going to be able to just get straight, straight E85 in this car, but if I can mix, um, you know, if I can put E85 in it sometimes when I'm around a pump and then 93 other times and not have to worry about switching maps and stuff, to me, that's a no-brainer. So I will say that flex fuel is a game changer. I was nervous at trusting it first, but... Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dang, this tune, this thing is fast now, like properly fast gives it a little more of an edge. Like it already had an edge, but now it's just even more lively. What a car, what a tune. Huge thanks to Corbin from Johnson Tuning. Huge thanks to Turning Concepts for uh, hooking me up, man. Like this is, this car is killer with this tune as if it already wasn't. If you guys have a GT350 or any car and you want to get a tune, check them out. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the, in the comments below about how much power we gained and whatnot. And uh, if you want to check me out in between episodes, you can check me out on Instagram at Eat Sleep Drive TV. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I'm going to go have a fun little drive. <laughs>